What's a phrase that shitty people use? A guy at the club last night said it's not sexual harassment to kiss a girl without her consent as long as you feel she wants you to. He also said I was gay for asking a girl if I could kiss her and then not kissing her when she politely declined. Fellas is it gay to want to kiss a woman? Or to respect boundaries and consent? She told that prick that she was actually happy I had asked her. Well that didn't sit right with him so he pulled in another girl and asked if she would rather a guy ask to kiss her or just swoop in and do it. Boy I hope he felt stupid when she said the first one. You couldn't have known, and I'm sorry you had to witness that, along with being invalidated by that person. Peace to you too. Good God, that's terrible. How shitty of a person do you have to be to say that? Had a friend who committed suicide many years ago. Not once have I thought that he was selfish or a coward, but I've spent much time thinking about the pain he must have been feeling for that to be his only way forward. The customer is always right. The fuck they are. 20 plus years of customer service and the people who pull out this gem are the people who are a, not right. B, knows they're in the wrong and C, are trying to bully the CS person into getting what they want. It immediately makes me see red. Customers are important to any business and you should try reasonable measures to retain existing customers, but not only are they not always right, bending over backwards to retain bad customers often drives off good ones, and teaches bad ones that poor behavior is rewarded. We treat our employees like family slash we're a family here. So you expect the people you pay to put up with your dysfunction, petty grudges, and irrational moods. Cool cool. I'm opting out. I'm a type A personality. You're an asshole, rigid, and can't accept change, and you think that's a star quality rather than a problem. I'm just brutally honest and tell it like it is. It's always used by people who primarily enjoy the brutal part. They are never being brutally honest about how good someone is at something. It's always an excuse to be an asshole. I mean it can't exactly be brutal if it's about a positive can it? Someone can only be brutally honest if they're being honest about something uncomfortable or unpleasant. The opposite would be something like delightfully honest. Another example like this is a more subtle one. Just saying. The people who are just saying are usually just saying shit. Some nasty comment. I never hear it when people have said something nice. Just saying is not a justification or defense. That sermon was great. From now on I'm gonna start telling it like it is. Marge you're getting a little fat around the thighs. Dad. You too, boy. Oh shut up Homer. You're the fattest one in the car. You didn't have to tell it like it is Marge. Had a pita pull this once. Okay, I'll play the same game. You're a blown out hag and you treat people like garbage and every time I see you I'm going to tell you this and end with, but I'm just brutally honest and tell it like it is. They had a number of tantrums and I would just repeat myself. Higher UPS pulled me into a meeting. I told them, since you allow this from her, I'm going to do it too. So, here's the thing, and I have no idea if this is what he meant or if he's an ass, there is a romance to not having to say the words. If you can communicate consent slash desire without words and have it acted upon the kiss is better. Asking might, in fact, ruin that feeling and make it no longer desirable, highly dependent on context. So, occasionally, a kiss might take place that wasn't wanted, non-consensual, that was an honest mistake and I wouldn't call that harassment slash assault. However, such a kiss should be followed by an apology and the kisser should back off and not attempt anything further without spoken permission. They frame being a douche as a positive character trait. Honestly a marvel. I mean, it's absolutely possible to read body language well enough to tell that a woman is into you enough to kiss without explicitly asking. There are definitely women out there who would find it kinda strange slash icky if you ask directly instead of intuiting the right moment. 
there's a reason you never see guys asking can I kiss you in any rom-com that is universally loved by lots of women, it always just flows and happens naturally and effortlessly. The rest of what you said about him reflects very very poorly on him however. Shoulda stuck yet tongue in his mouth and say hey I thought you wanted it. He's right, that's not sexual harassment. It's sexual assault. So Finding a close friend that committed suicide. Oh just get over it. Took the coward's way out. Never spoke to that person again. Years later didn't go to their funeral. Fuck them. I pity anyone finding someone that killed themselves. Very difficult to get over. Took a long for me. Then realized I couldn't do anything for them. Didn't know they were hurting inside. Peace to everyone. I remember telling my friend about the time I had depression and was really fighting to not just commit suicide and she said she thought I was a coward for even thinking about it. I was hurt by it but it's such a stereotype to associate suicide with the coward's way out or being selfish that it didn't even surprise me. I just tried to explain how it's not about throwing away your responsibilities, it's about weighing out whether your life is worth it for the world. You're deciding whether you're useful to society, whether you're causing trouble for the people around you, whether there is at least as much happiness waiting for you as sadness and frustration, whether you're essentially a waste of space or a harmful existence. It's the furthest thing from the coward's way out and it's not about being selfish, the idea that I'm not entitled to my own life is selfish on her part, but let's ignore that. She didn't understand it, but felt bad about calling it the coward's way out. It's not really the most rational thing, so I can't blame anyone for not understanding. Similarly, for less effective suicide attempts, oh it was just a cry for help. Fuck you, there is a massive canyon between feeling depressed slash suicidal and attempting suicide and a tiny crack between attempting suicide and committing suicide. Even if there weren't, do you hear yourself? If someone is literally crying for help do you go oh you're fine and go about your day? I had a classmate once say people who kill themselves are selfish and when I told her she sounded like she sent her empathy down a river she got mad. Anyone who makes any kind of victim blaming commentary on people killing themselves need a good whack in the back of the head.